And let me take this back across to Santosh Sharma because while we're seeing a crackdown in Prayagraj where he is, the house that he's standing in front of has been demolished. What is the action that's really been taken against the gangster Atik Ahmed's properties as well, Santosh? He's of course behind bars. He's approached the Supreme Court. We'll talk about that in a bit. But I want you to tell our viewers what are the other steps that have been taken. Don't think Santosh is with us. We'll reconnect with him to get that update. In the meanwhile, uh, let me bring in Abhishek Mishra on this because Abhishek, we know that the gangsters also approached the Supreme Court opposing his transfer from, in fact, the Ahmedabad jail. Well, certainly, and this is something which is very evident, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 sense he has as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned. He feels insecure uh, being here, and that is the only reason that he has moved to the Supreme Court. Uh, also, we can take into consideration the kind of statement the Yogi Adityanath ministers have given. JPS Rathor clearly saying that, you know, if somebody will do something, and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, there are options, and Gadi Dhi Palat Sakti Hai, something like that. Not just him, other ministers and other... MLAs as well, including uh, SP Sikh Baghel, Subrat Pata from Kanoj, and others as well. So that is something which is uh, certainly a major reason behind it, and that is why uh, 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 he has moved to the Supreme Court. It remains to be seen what kind of relief, whether or not he will get. But one thing is very clear, Akshita, that the government is very keen on this case because it is not only about the violation, it is not just about the fact that how a person publicly was attacked, was killed into the public police custody. But now mm -hmm. it has also become a part of the yogi government's stake. And that is something which is an immense importance for the government. And that is the only reason that they are trying to break it at every level, be at the race which were conducted, the arrest which was made, the encounter which happened, and now today the demolition drive which was conducted in Prayagraj in order to make all the kind of actions and efforts yeah to get to grip over Atik Ahmed and his close allies as well. Let's, let's yes. recap how the story really has progressed, the action that's been taken by the Yogi government so far. Abhishek, stay on with me. Uh, we'll get you a clear timeline of how this case has moved forward. It started with February 26th when an FIR was filed against Atik Ahmed's brother, against his wife, as well as two sons. They're uh, allegedly the conspirators along with Atik Ahmed himself. The next day on February 27th, cops detained over 40 people, all of them linked to the accused, all of them linked to this former SP leader and gangster. It's on the same day also that one of the accused in Umesh Pal's murder was killed, was gunned down in an encounter by the UP police. So this happened on the same day on February 27th, barely two days after Umesh Pal's murder. On March 1st, Gangster politician Atik's home was also raided. He has multiple properties spread across Uttar Pradesh. Many of these properties have now been seized by the authorities. Then you have also the big update that came in today of his aide Zafar's home being raided, of guns and swords being seized, and also of also his property being demolished. But this is something we've spoken about before as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned. It's not the first time that we've really seen this kind of a crackdown and that too using the bulldozer on rioters, on protesters and now clearly on gangsters as well in Uttar Pradesh. There's a reason Yogi is called Bulldozer Baba. In the last few years, this earth mover has essentially become a dreaded tool in the state. It all started with a crackdown on anti-CEA protesters and rioters. This was in 2019-2020. Their properties were demolished. They were given, uh, they were even made to cough up money to pay for all the damage on public property. That move, however, didn't go down well with the Supreme Court. Another similar high-profile demolition was that of activist Javed Mohammed, accused of fueling the violent protest in Prayagraj over Nupur Sharma's comments on Prophet Mohammed that triggered violence in Uttar Pradesh. Again, a no-nonsense approach from Yogi Adityanath. He cracked down on the person who allegedly was the one who fueled the protest. Now, there have been questions about whether it's only one community that's being targeted. That hasn't been the case. We've seen multiple incidents of people from other religions also facing this bulldozer drive. Just weeks ago, there was this incident of a 45-year-old woman and her 20-year-old daughter dying during an anti-encroachment drive protest in Kanpur. And that sparked again a massive debate on whether these demolition drives are actually being conducted legally. But as far as Yogi Adityanath is concerned, he's categorically maintained that there's a need to crack down on unlawful elements, whatever means possible. 